that 30s guy here, except today I'm going to be that 1830s guy instead of the 1930s because I'm at the old Bethpage Village Restoration, one of the greatest little history parks in the country, I think. I've been going here since I was a kid, and it really uh, immerses you in what it was like to live in the 19th century. It's a makeup of what a little village would have been like in the early 19th century on Long Island. We've got a wide variety of houses, stores, and a farm. And take you on a little self-guided tour today. This in the background is the general, one of the general stores. They have two. One right there. And one right there. Here is the Powell Farm. And this was where, actually this whole property once belonged to Powell. Bethpage Park, I believe the whole, it's actually more to this park. There's a golf course and a country club and stuff other than this village restoration. And uh, it was, I don't know if it started, but it was at least expanded and uh, improved by uh, Robert Moses in the 1930s. But originally, before all that, it was a big farm, the Powell Farm. And they have uh, his house here, restored to, um, let me see, about 1855, so just before the Civil War. <laughs> this is a historic farm, and not a petting zoo, in case you're wondering, the sign says. Here's some 19th century farm implements. Seems strange to us, but just about four or five generations ago, this was pretty common stuff. And they'd probably be surprised that we're documenting it. <laughs> just, they're common work tools. It's pretty neat. Over here, I believe there's usually a Pig. Oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> Just tripping cool. It's kind of a hot day. <laughs> All right. Now, since everyone likes animals, I'm going to take a look at the barnyard. I see some nice gobble, gobble turkeys. The 19th century Poland spring bottles. Just kidding, of course. Hi, how you doing? This is the farm. Now this uh, this whole uh, restoration was all this guy's property at some point, right? Yeah, the whole That's... thing was farmland. Wow. No, this actually isn't the original barn. Um, this, oh. this was built in the 1700s, this barn, but it was in Syosset. Uh, the original, the farmhouse is original. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, that was the, original site? Yeah. Wow. But the original barn, uh, actually, it made it to the 1930s, but it burned down. Oh. The fact it made it so long is yeah. still pretty impressive. But And then when they made it into a museum, um, this... This is a real uh, 1790s around barn, wow. and uh, and they moved it to, uh, from Syosset to here. So, 
Real 1700s barn, just not the one the Powells had. Yeah. But it's still it's pretty neat. Cool. Yeah. You can see up there, uh, since they didn't have nails back then, they used wooden panels. Right. Being... Had to make your own nails, kind of. <laughs> oh. Cool. Oh, sure. Thank you. Here they are. Cool. Thanks. Take a look at the house now. Yeah. The original. Uh, the original, right, yeah. right. This was not moved. It was, it's, um, it's from here. It's like 200 acres that this whole thing is on. Mm -hmm. So um, the Powells were farmers um, and um, Quakers as well. So, oh, okay. That's, yeah. I didn't so know that. That's the pig. And yeah, I saw you already saw the pigs. That's yeah. The, the pig sty that actually was there. Um, they did an archaeological dig and found that that is where the pig pen was, where the smokehouse was, and oh. where the outhouse was. Um, so that's why they recreated it to, um, you know, to, to yeah. try to, um, make it the same. So come on in. Sure. I used to come to Old Bethpage all the time, but the last time I was here was 2013 because I oh, moved to Florida. Yes. So. Oh, okay. I don't really have <laughs> this, to change much. This is still the, yeah. um, the out kitchen, the beehive, the wash cauldron, candle maker, soap maker, um, I've looked, uh, kind of plant is drying over there. I don't know. Oh, I was just yeah. curious. I, I don't know if, uh, if it, it's even, I have no idea. Okay. I know that these are nuts from this tree out here. Oh, wow. Where actually it's been used to, um, when you break it down, mm -hmm. okay, and this is, that's what this is used for. You put it in the bucket, you break it down, and you, you know, thin it out and stuff like that, and it's, um, becomes um, what they use for quill writing, the ink. They'll use that for the, for the quill writing when they do that. And this is wool? And wool from the sheep from the farm. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, and then this is the, the regular kitchen. Mm -hmm. They would have, they would have baked in the beehive oven and cooked here. Um, oh. Basic, basic stuff here. Mm -hmm. The dry kitchen, um, where that's you know they would fill it with the water yeah. for their dishes, and then um, shove it out the window. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We'll do something with it. Just wait till it's sure. I'm just gonna look at the dining room. Oh, look at that old clock. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Neat. Yeah, so that, you know, so you probably know that they, they were Quakers, mm -hmm. um, and they were able to, Quakers um, will have pictures of themselves, um, whereas Amish do not have any images oh, of themselves. Yeah. So, um, this is where he had um, uh, the pantry to keep, you know, um, extra stock bowls and stuff mm -hmm. like that. This is where his office would be, had been to, for his business as a farmer. Um, the dining room. Oh, wow. That desk was actually his desk. Oh, wow. So, some of the furniture, um, we're not really sure what came from him or it's just from the period. But that desk was actually. How about desk. the painting? Yes, and the paintings. That one and this picture over here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. No, what yeah. they look like. So, um, sitting there, this, this was added on later in, um, so this is from 1855. Mm -hmm. um, this was added on later, they said probably for the older children, because he had 10 children, wow. um, for the older children to have like their, their yeah. space to themselves. This is the master bedroom for William and his wife. There are 10 bedrooms upstairs. And this is the parlor, um, more formal, um, formal, uh, for when guests, yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, and that is a, a genuine Franklin stove. Very 
So at this time, Franklin Pierce was president, only the 14th president. So it's kind of like, mm -hmm. give you an idea that uh, some time has passed. Yeah. Here's the Lewis Rich Hat Shop. Around the time 1830 is what it's set to. And here was Lewis Rich's house restored to about 1830. Let's go take a look. Oh, it's got that great old musty smell. Here's a picture of the first four presidents. Wow, I picked this house first because it's usually closed when I'm here. It's nice to see it open. It's a fire pit. Checkerboard on the table. Bedroom. Hello. Good afternoon. This is the Rich House. Belongs to Lewis Rich. The hat of the shop is next door. Like the hat shop that was brought here from Middle Island, and you've seen it as it would have been in 1830. Yeah. In 1830, the people living here were Lewis, his wife, five sons, and one daughter. Five boys had beds upstairs in the attic. Little girl would have had a convertible bed arrangement in the front room. And the parents' bed was in the set wall behind her. I'm making lemonade. Very yeah. popular beverage in the 19th century, but it had, there were some problems with it, so until the last part of the century, you didn't you have, it wasn't really very common or plentiful or cheap. Uh, it was a favorite beverage for temperance types. In fact, Lucy Hayes, Rutherford B. Yeah, Hayes. Lemonade wife. Lucy. <laughs> Lemonade Lucy, yeah. yes indeed. Uh, the, uh, the reactions of the various ambassadors and being confronted with lemonade at a formal banquet are, have not been fully recorded. But you see, there are a couple of problems with lemonade, at least in the first half of the century. One of them is simply lemons. They're not native to the New World. Right. Mr. Columbus came back with seeds for them on his second voyage in 1493. But it took, oh, a couple centuries before there were really enough, several centuries before there were really enough lemon groves to produce enough lemons to make much in the way of um, lemonade. The next issue was sweetening. Those are sugar loaves. That's how sugar came, white sugar came in the early part of the 19th century. You take a pair of sugar nippers, think it form pliers, snip off a piece. You can either drop that straight into your hot coffee and tea as a sweetener, or you're going to have to granulate it yourself. Hmm. They talk about well-pounded loaf sugar, which is what, what is meant. But the real issue is the nature of the sugar cane plant, which is extremely fussy as to where it will grow mm -hmm. and how much tending it needs. It likes hot, steamy, Jamaica, parts, parts of Cuba, southern Louisiana, so on and so forth. Uh, at this point, most of the sugar used in the United States came from the British island of Jamaica. It was a British te territory at that mm -hmm. point. Well, the thing is that in 1805, thanks to the Honorable Mr. Wilberforce and company, uh, the British started abolishing slavery in their empire. They right. started by abolishing the slave trade in 1805. And it went on from there in 1834 that slavery was entirely abolished. So what happens to the price of sugar? It goes through the roof. Mm -hmm. It goes up a couple of extra notches after the Civil War because um, there were two relatively small uh, sugarcane capable areas on the continental United States, Louisiana and the Carolinas, and they lost their slaves. Sugarcane has to, the only way you can get sugarcane field hands working the days before mechanization was People had no choice in the matter. Yeah. Uh, East slaves, no slaves, no sugar. In fact, a lot of Quakers signed uh, affidavits swearing they would never touch touch sugar, white sugar, because of that. Um, so what do you sweeten your lemonade with if you haven't got uh, white sugar? Well, you can try honey if you've got sufficiently light honey. And some strains of maple sugar might work, not too badly. Oh, I'm a little dubious about that. Molasses is another sugar cane product anyway. Most of that was going to rum. Yeah. Uh, sorghum syrup? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no way. So <laughs> there's that. The last issue, which is relatively minor, is 
uh, cooling it off, icing it. Yeah. Now you can use cold ice, well water and cold spring water, that's fine, but ice until you get to the 1830s is very hard to come by unless you live in an area that couldn't have its own ice houses. All right, maybe they shipped ice down the uh, Hudson River to New York City before this. In fact, I suspect they would. But um, it's not until the 1830s that a gentleman named Frederick Tudor starts cutting ice out of the lakes of New England, which are generally well supplied with that. Mm -hmm. uh, packed it up in a lot of sawdust and wooden hole sailing vessels and started sending it around the world. It got away as far away as Bombay, India. Oh. There's a Ki regular Kipling story about the animals' reactions when an American ice ship finishes dumping the cargo it hasn't sold into the into Bombay Harbor, and it's kind of amusing. Of course, after the Civil War, 1870s, 1880s, people come up with ways to make ice with gas-powered machinery. Los Codera Ice Works up in Huntington uh, got started that way. In fact, I remember buying ice from them after Hurricane Gloria in 1981. They were the only ones who had any because their machinery did not require electricity to run. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Okay. yeah this house... Uh, I've been here a bunch of times in earlier, but uh, it's always closed this one. I think this is the first time I've actually been in here. <laughs> well, I've been here most weekends yeah. this year, but it's not, been. I think the last time I was here was like 2013, so oh, it's been a little while since the last one. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your visit. Thank you. Here's one of the two general stores. This is restored to 1840. A little older than the other one, it's just 1866 restoration. It's a little smaller. Let's take a look. How you doing? Hello. Eighteen forty was the Harrison and Tyler campaign. We're in eighteen forty in this one. Yeah. And what are you working on? Taking what was called a fancy basket, which was a line of baskets that farmers started to make beginning around 1830s, throughout the 1800s, to supplement their farm income. Oh, okay. So, your own little side job. Well, you yes. have to. You do it in the winter months. Yeah. When you're not farming. So you, Makes sense. you can't go three, four months without an income. Yeah. So it's too cold to farm. So you're going to start making things, whether they're brews or baskets or anything, and you then sell it to stores like this. Oh, currency guide. Right, and that explains why, if you look in his book, this is a photocopy of this man's day book. Mm -hmm. Goods were priced in British currency. And British currency is confusing. <laughs> Not if right? you were living in 1840. No, and I always get confused at shillings and pence. Pounds. Well, you would know if yeah. you were living in 1840 yeah. here in New York. You'd be common with A shilling it. Yeah. was 12 and a half cents, eight shillings to a New York dollar, hmm. 20 shillings to a pound, so a pound of two dollars and fifty cents, and 12 pence to a shilling, so a pence is basically a penny. Was that pretty stable? It didn't shift uh, too no, much back then? No, that's why they used the British, British oh. pound. Because oh, oh, it was there were tied different to currencies yeah. in the United States. Right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Uh, no central banks after Jackson. Correct. <laughs> uh, this old playing cards. Yep. Cool. Very nice. Thank you. Here's the carriage we started the video on. Let me take a closer look at it. Pretty neat. Nice little paintings. And this is the bigger general store. Leighton General Store. Thank you. 
Here's a bathtub. <laughs> Mid 19th century bathtub. And a sink. Says contemplation. So this is this would have been their dining room. The carpets and the um, wallpapers are computer reproductions of uh, oh, photos that we have of the house at the time. Wow. And then that couch is a convertible couch. Look at that nice desk. I haven't books. found anyone mm -hmm. yet who is absolutely certain as to how it works, uh -huh. but we do know that it's pulled up to a bed. And then this is a pump organ. This is 1866, yeah, so Lincoln. This, this mantle here is purely decorative. It's at the height of his fame. The fireplace there was never actually... Martyr to the cause of union. And this is the only house on the property that has indoor plumbing. Oh. They dug their well, indoor and then plumbing. they built the house so the kitchen would be situated over it. And they pour a pump up. Here's uh, upstairs. Can't go up, it's blocked, but. Here's kind of the town square. Pretty neat. Now, let me see, this small house is Searing House. Take a look, it's right here. In the Searing House was restored to Can't find it. Oh, 1815. This was a doctor's office. This is pretty old. Oh, wow. Look at this. Pretty neat. Old style wheel wheelchair. And a phrenology. That was a big thing in the 19th, mid 19th century. Uh, where they we're trying to map out the brain and think uh, which area did what, or it could tell your personality, and uh, it's a whole complicated thing that was pretty much completely made up. There it is, reading a book about something. Nice little bedpan under there. <laughs> cool. This is another house. Other times I've been here, it's usually closed, so it's nice to see. This is an old Methodist church they took from Plainview, New York, Nassau County. And it's restored, I believe, to the 1850s. Yeah, about 1857. But, I remember hearing my late grandmother say that she, one of her relatives or somebody, uh, once got married here. Or somebody she knew, or something. So that's pretty neat. 
This is what it looks like. Too bad it's not open. Can't go inside, but you know, maybe I'll take a look through the windows here. It's pretty much just a church, but just an interesting fact that uh, someone uh, related to me might have uh, gotten married there. This is the old schoolhouse from 1855. 1845. Now I can think of the videos where people are like, mmm, hot dogs, like hot dogs, the cattails, and they just explode. Oh, forbidden hot dogs. Yeah, forbidden hot dogs. I hate that I know. Here's the Noon Inn. It's a barroom hotel from 1850. Here you can get birch beer and root beer for a dollar. I'm gonna do that because it's pretty hot. Hello. Oh, sir, can we just use the other floor as the Oh, yeah, sure. Lounge with dominoes. Here's the bar. Are we just looking around, looking for information, looking for uh, the way you whistle? <laughs> uh, it's kind of uh, all three. <laughs> but I'll, I'll take um, a birch beer. I'll just do one dollar. This is the oldest house in the restoration, restored to 1765, so they don't have the American flag, and the colonial one. But it looks like they're locking up, so I can't go in. <laughs> but there, you know what it looks like. Here's where they play some old time baseball games every now and then. Here's the scoreboard, August 1st, 1864. And here's the field of dreams. Batter's boxes. One day I'd like to come and see them play this old style baseball. It's be interesting, but here's where it all takes place. Just so you know. Here is Box Blacksmith Shop. It's not open. But usually when I've been here before, they actually have someone working on iron tools. Let's see if I can look through this little hole here. Here is uh, the Cider Press building, building that would have been used to make uh, apple cider and I guess uh, alcoholic apple cider. And this, I don't know if they have, uh, no, it's restored 1840. And this is a building I've never seen open, unfortunately. It's always closed every time I come. It's all right, they only have a limited amount of buildings they can open each time with the volunteers that they have, but this is cool. This is an apple tree. Apple's not yet ripe yet, I don't think. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. I never noticed uh, apples in full bloom other times I've come here. That's pretty cool. Oh, the outlet. There's ones that are really red up there. It's kind of sunny. Pretty neat, just the same. Just a close up. 